Veloscope Training Course. Welcome to Veloscope. This fluorescence technology is setting a new standard for oral cancer examinations, identifying abnormalities through changes in tissue fluorescence. Velscope is based on similar fluorescence technology used in other medical areas, including the lung, cervix, skin, and colorectal applications. The Velscope handpiece emits a safe blue light into the oral cavity, exciting specific molecules. This causes tissue fluorescence from the surface epithelium to the basement membrane, where potential pre-malignant changes typically start, and onto the stroma beneath. By utilizing patented filtering in the handpiece, the clinician is able to directly view the different fluorescence responses to help differentiate between normal and abnormal tissue. Healthy tissue appears as an apple green color, while suspicious regions cause a loss of fluorescence and will appear dark. The patented Velscope technology was developed by LED Dental in conjunction with the British Columbia Cancer Agency. This video is a guide to the efficient and effective use of the Velscope. The four modules include the 10 steps of an oral cancer examination, Velscope assembly and components, Velscope examination, and practical guide to the clinical use of Velscope. Also included is the Velscope lecture presentation. Module 1 the 10 steps of a thorough oral cancer examination using white light and Velsco. Good morning, Glenn. I'm Dr. Glenn Vanass. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, thanks for coming in today. Today we're going to do... Inform patients that they are receiving a thorough oral health assessment, including a comprehensive oral mucosal examination. This shows that the practice cares about their well-being, informs the patients they are receiving the best possible overall oral health care, it demonstrates that this is not just a cleaning. Before I start, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Comprehensively review the patient's medical and dental history, including history of present conditions, oral and dental habits, including bruxism and finger habits, pertinent medical conditions, medications and or allergies. Assess the patient for cancer risk, including family cancer history, tobacco and alcohol use. Gwen, can you take your glasses off for me, please? Sure. Do a visual exam and assessment of the face, head, and neck. Look for facial asymmetry, lumps and bumps, cutaneous changes, color changes, and patches. Gwen, I'm just going to check your lymph nodes now. Okay. okay I'm just Perform an extraoral palpation of the head and neck, looking for abnormal lumps and bumps and abnormally enlarged lymph nodes. Just feeling inside your lower lip here. Perform an intraoral and transoral palpation of hard and soft tissue, looking for abnormal lumps, bumps, and nodules. Perform a visual exam of intraoral structures utilizing magnification, paying particular attention to the high-risk areas, including lips, retromolar complex, soft palate, ventrolateral tongue, and the floor of the mouth. You're looking for induration abnormal hardness of a lesion or area on palpation, ulceration, loss of continuity of the mucosal or any soft tissue, fungation, exophytic growth with finger-like projection, elevation, part of lesion is raised above the normal level of the surrounding tissue, fixation, the attachment of normally mobile tissues to underlying deeper structures with loss of mobility, and any changes from normal tissue especially red areas and red and white patches. Repeat the visual examination of intraoral structures with fluorescence visualization using the Velscope. Photo document any areas of concern, both with visible light and with Velscope. Record and document all findings, recording no areas of concern observed within the normal limits, if appropriate. If an area is discovered, the oral mucosal soft tissue evaluation form and oral schematics forms can be used or referred to for assistance. 
inform the patient of all findings and recommend course of action. State that there are no areas of concern observed within the normal limits, if appropriate, or if an area of concern is noted, provide patient instructions and recommend follow-up. Seek a probable cause, such as traumatic, irritational, infectious, developmental, nutritional caused by systemic disease or unknown cause. If not particularly of concern, encourage removal of all potential causes of the lesion and schedule a recall appointment for re-evaluation in two weeks. Consider using adjunctive techniques or the brush biopsy. If particularly concerned by the lesion's appearance or growth behavior, perform a full thickness scalpel biopsy or refer the patient for a biopsy. Module 2 – Velscope Assembly and Components Thoroughly inspect all system components as you unpack the Velscope system. If you notice any damaged or missing parts, contact our customer support immediately. Have your dealer information available, along with your unit serial number, which is at the back of the system. The Velscope Starter Kit will assist your practice in the initial implementation of the Velscope system. It's designed to help efficiently integrate the Velscope examination into your workflow and case management without disrupting everyday office routines. A Phillips screwdriver is required to assemble the Velscope system. The Velscope LSU is designed for use in either a vertical or horizontal position. Decide on the best configuration for your operatory before assembling the system. Never operate the Velscope system with the LSU positioned on its side, neither right nor left, as doing so may cause damage to the lamp and unit. To assemble the LSU in the vertical orientation, insert the pin on the base stand into the mating hole on the underside of the LSU. Insert screws and tighten until secure. Be careful not to over tighten. To attach the handpiece brackets, stand the unit up. Insert the pin that extends from each of the brackets into the mating holes on the side of the LSU. Insert screws and tighten until secure. When the LSU lies horizontally on the counter, it does not require the stand base. The steps to attach the brackets are the same as for vertical orientation, except they are screwed into the bottom of the LSU. Take the end of the light guide and push it firmly into the socket. Ensure that the light guide is fully inserted. Failure to do so could result in an improper electrical connection and the handpiece thumb push button will not function correctly. Nest the handpiece in the brackets. Insert the power cable into the receptacle on the side of the LSU. The best orientation and location for the Velscope system depends on the configuration, lighting control, and space availability in a particular practice. Some considerations for the best utilization and implementation of the system include the following. Visualization of tissue fluorescence with Velscope is optimized when the ambient light levels are minimized. A darkened examining area is the ideal setting for performing a Velscope examination. If the examining area does not allow for controlling and minimizing the amount of ambient light, the disposable Veldred can be used to create a suitable environment in almost any situation. The Velscope's fiber optic light guide provides for a maximum effective reach of approximately 5.5 feet. The Velscope LSU should be placed in close enough proximity to allow proper manipulation and use of the handpiece. The Velscope system is designed to allow the LSU to be placed on a conventional dental countertop, 32 inches or higher, without the fiber optic light guide reaching the floor when the Velscope handpiece is resting in the brackets. However, care should be taken to ensure that the fiber optic light guide does not drape on the floor so as to avoid damage. The patient's protective safety glasses should be cleaned and disinfected with soap and water after each use. Do not use alcohol or alcohol-based products, as they will degrade the glasses. The glasses should be inspected before and after each use, and should be properly disposed of and replaced when they show signs of deterioration or once they have exceeded their useful life expectancy.